Welcome back to Let's Play Saga Red Dead, where we play Red Dead Redemption 2 and tell cowboy stories. And just as promised, we are telling the story of the OK Corral and the few elements that led up to the Earps and Doc Holliday leaving Tombstone. Oh, as we left off, um, Sheriff Fred White had, had been shot uh, and killed in the street. Wyatt uh, had arrested Curly Bill, who ended up getting off through the courts uh, somehow. Uh, a lot of the cowboys had the courts in their pockets. Uh, they had a newspaper that was friendly with them. Um, there were a decent amount of people in the area who were friendly with the cowboys. So everybody thinks about outlaws. Oh man, everybody, everybody hated the outlaws. Outlaws a lot of the times were friendly to the people who, uh, who they, they had to live around. Uh, and, and in many cases would also help out the people that they had to live around because they had to live around them. Um, you couldn't just make everybody around you hate you and then still live there because eventually, you know, like everybody carried guns, man. Eventually the townspeople would have enough. They'd kill you. They, they'd, uh, they'd bring you in, they'd lynch you, they'd, you know, whatever it was. But if you made friends with all them people and you took care of those people, when it came time for the law to come get you, a lot of them people would have a problem with it. You go to court, you get off. So that uh, that was that was the case with the cowboys in um, in the tombstone area. Uh, they they took care of the people around them. Uh, they were obnoxious, but they paid well to be obnoxious. And as ridiculous as that is. Um, How many? So Lots. we're gonna watch this little bit right here, everywhere. and then we'll nice. dive straight in. Where is that little Irish? I'm not quite sure. Trelawney's off trying to find out. Anyone been in the black water see how things lie? Places crawling with Pinkertons, bounty hunters, and ah. pictures of Dutch and Hosea. Oh, well, we got a lot of money sitting in that town. And that's where it's gonna remain for now. Why haven't they hanged Sean, I wonder? I think he's bait. Well, they wanna trial him publicly. Gentlemen, Sean is being moved up the upper Montana been to a federal prison out west. Damn. We can't be rescuing people from some federal prison. We either rescue him now or we cut him loose. We're not cutting anyone loose. Of course not. Ike Skelding's boys are moving him to a camp nearby before handing him over to the government. So, I guess we need to stop them before they get to camp. Charles, why don't you head up on the north side, and we'll head up on the other side of the valley and meet you. That way we have them in either direction. Javier, Josiah, come on. Let's go see. You know, Arthur, the government, or people whom the government like, seem to be very angry. Sure, well, we'll rescue Sean, and then we'll get ourselves lost, good and proper. It's a big country. I hope so. All right. They're going to do some more talking, but I'm going to tell this story. Um, most of the other talking is just small talk for the most part anyway. Now, the tensions had come to a head between the Earps and Cowboys on Wednesday, October 26, 1881. Ike Clinton, Billy Claiborne, and some other Cowboys had been yes, threatening to kill the Earps for several Elizabeth weeks. Isn't a very and the Tombstone right City now. Marshal Virgil Earp learned we there, that they were armed and had gathered near the OK Corral. He asked Wyatt, Morgan, and Doc Holliday to assist right, him. Follow me. As he intended to disarm them. We'll now, them. That was actually the intention. They weren't Let's going there to sure kill him. him they were going there to disarm him. They were going to charge him with some stuff that they, they that they had done and arrest him. The so Wyatt had been deputized by so, Virgil a few days prior and, uh, as a temporary assistant marshal. And Morgan was deputi deputized by uh, the city marshal. What happened in New York? 
Um, around 3 p.m. Well, wait, wait, wait. wait. Especially with Holiday you. had also nice been deputized by Virgil uh, so that he could act within oh, the bounds of the law. Now around 3 p.m. the Earps and Holiday me, headed towards Fremont Street where the Cowboys had been gathering. Let's go. Stay On Fremont, right Fremont Street Quiet. they ran into, talking, I'm going to butcher this name, I always do. Very cute. Chelsea, we'll just say Chelsea, uh, County Sheriff Behan, who told them or implied that he had disarmed the Cowboys to avoid alarming citizens uh, and less intentions when disarming the Cowboys. Virgil, okay, to, to avoid tensions. Yeah. Virgil gave a coach gun to Doc Holliday so he could conceal it under his long coat. Virgil took Doc's walking stick. Okay. They found five cowboys in a vacant lot adjacent to the OK Corral's rear entrance on Fremont Street. The lot was narrow between uh, the hard... Uh, uh, sorry, the lot was narrow between the Harwood house and Fly's boarding house. There was a small hey, lot between these two buildings. Get your binoculars um, out. Let's see what we're dealing with here. And uh, let me see. The Harwood house was a photography studio, I believe. Um, the two parties were initially only about six to ten feet apart. Ike Clinton and Billy Claiborne fled, but Tom and Frank McLowry um, and Billy Clinton stood their ground and were killed. Different witnesses offered various stories about Holiday's actions. Uh, the Cowboys' witnesses testified that Holiday first pulled out a nickel plated pistol. Uh, he was known to carry, while others reported that he so are these bounty uh, fired a long bronze-colored gun, boys. possibly the coach gun. But the reality is, is that Holiday killed Tom McLowry with a shotgun like blast sure uh, in the side of, of his fuss. chest. Yep. Holiday was shot. grazed by a bullet, oh, a possibly by kicking. Frank McLowry, well, uh, who was on Fremont the Street at the time. Them. Oh, yes. He supposedly challenged Holiday, yelling, uh, I got you now. And Holiday responded, There's Charles on the other side. <laughs> Holiday is reported to have replied, Blaze away, you're a daisy if you have. And McLowry died of shots to his stomach and behind his ear. Holiday may have also wounded Billy Clanton, but that's not verified. Okay. One analysis of the fight gives credit to either Doc Holliday or Morgan Earp for firing the fatal shot to McLowry on Fremont Street. Holliday was on McLowry's right and Morgan Earp was on his left. McLowry was shot in the right side of the head. So Holiday is often given the credit for the shooting. Um, and I, I believe that's probably how it happened because Morgan couldn't have shot him on the right hand side. Uh, Morgan was clipped uh, by a shot across his back uh, that nicked both shoulder blades and a vertebrae. Uh, Virgil was shot through the calf and Holiday was grazed with a bullet, I believe, in his arm. Oh, this entire fight took six seconds. This is one of the most talked about gunfights in all of Western history, and it took six seconds. Everybody has this big idea of this giant gunfight that, oh, pow, 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 pow. Yeah, okay, I mean, that's true. There was a lot of, a lot of gunfire, but it was a lot of gunfire and a very, 
very small amount of time and I don't think people realize a lot of the times how short some of these fights actually were when you're talking about gunfights I mean these these people were in the open facing each other not like they were behind cover or anything like that come on so now there was a few things leading up to the herbs finally leaving out of tombstone but this was a big one um, there was some there was a mess in the courts where the Earps got off of all of this. Of course, it said that they acted within the law. And they did act within the law. A lot of people want to be like, oh, they went down there brewing for a fight. Well, they may have. But they went down there brewing for a fight within the bounds of the law. And then that's something that a lot of people tend to forget. The law was different back then. Okay? Um, just like I try not to judge Doc Holliday by today's standards... Um, I also try not to judge the law by today's standards. Back then, it was a very different animal. And whereas I can, I have pointed out in, in other episodes where the law has uh, has overreached, um, there are other moments where I'm like, no, that was within the that was within the rules, you know. No. That's just, like, that's my take on it. But it is what it is. Now, two days later, Virgil was ambushed uh, while walking between saloons on Allen Street in Tombstone. Uh, and he was maimed by a shotgun blast, which struck his left arm and shoulder. Ike Clanton's hat was found in the back of the building uh, across from Allen Street where the shots were fired from. Wyatt wired U.S. Marshal Crowley P. Dake asking to be appointed Deputy U.S. Marshal with authority to select his own deputies. Dake granted uh, the request in late January and provided the ERPs with some funds that he borrowed from Wells Fargo. Uh, variously reported to be between five hundred and three thousand dollars. Now, uh, on March eighteenth of the same year, Morgan Earp was murdered while playing billiards. Um, he was shot by a gunman firing from the from a dark alley through a door window into the billiards room. Uh, he was struck in the right side, and the bullet shattered his spine, passing through his left side, and lodged uh, in the thigh of George Berry, while another round narrowly missed him. A doctor was summoned, and Morgan was moved from the floor to a nearby couch uh, while the murderers escaped in the dark. He died 40 minutes later. Come on, let's get up there. Um, and Wyatt felt at that point that he could not rely on civil justice and decided to take matters into his own hands to kill the murderers himself. Now, Two more. Look out. he did take matters into his own hands, but once again, he did it within the bounds of law. And a lot of people will look at the vengeance ride as a conflict of interest and I would say yeah it probably was a conflict of interest but it also wasn't without the bounds of law at the time um, and that's what we'll be talking about next um, is is the vengeance ride of Wyatt and Doc Holliday as they went to avenge the murder of Morgan and the attack upon uh, Virgil and their families. Uh, there were other reports of shotgun blasts being fired through the homes of, uh, of the Earps while their wives were inside and, and other things that the Cowboys did. So we'll be covering that next. We'll, uh, we'll talk about uh, the Vengeance Ride and finish up on Doc Holliday and We'll go from there. I hope you guys are all enjoying this. This is a very interesting piece of history. It's probably one of the most well-covered 
pieces of history or at least well-known pieces of history when it comes to the Old West. Um, and there's a lot of things people just don't know about it. Um, but the movie Tombstone covered a lot of this very well. But uh, these men were some, some very famous men uh, even, even in their time. Um, not just now. Like they, they remained popular over time. But uh, they were they were very famous uh, even then. So, in other case, we will see you next week as we talk about Wyatt's vengeance ride and uh, and cover the end of Doc Holliday's part of the story. And then we'll do uh, one last episode after that to cover the end of Wyatt's part of the story. And that will cover the Earths. And okay. after that, we'll probably talk about some outlaws again for a little bit and then go back and maybe finish up Wild Bill Hickok's story. But in either case, I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, like, comment, subscribe, tell me what you like, what you don't like, and uh, we'll be back next week. Less ugly from that other angle, Arthur. Come on. Uh, do I get a hug, Arthur? A warm embrace for a lost brother now found. <laughs> you know, nothing means more to me than this gang. The bond we share. It's the most real thing to me. I would kill for it, I would happily die for it. But in spite of all of that, I would have easily left you here to rot if Charles hadn't stopped me. I don't believe a word of that, Arthur. Get him out of here. You're a great man, Arthur Morgan. The kind of young whippersnapper can really admire. Oh, shut up. Right, we should split up. Javier, will you escort Mr. McGuire back to camp? Charles, best you ride separately. Be careful. There's patrols everywhere. What about you? I'm gonna see what's worth taking here. I'll meet you back there as soon as I can. All right. Okay, come on. <clears throat> Have I got stories for you? Yeah, I can't wait. <clears throat> I imagine y'all miss me a lot, but fear not, the joy's back in your lives now. <laughs> <laughs>